Good morning. All right, so we're switching from surface area to volume. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Now, how do we approach volume? Well, if you remember for surface area, it's like wrapping a gift. How much wrapping paper do we need? How much can we put around this figure? Whatever it is, um, those of you that get into the retail industry will find out. Sometimes wrapping gifts sucks. Um, personally, I like it. Anyways, that's surface area. We're switching to volume now. Guess what? Volume is how much can you put inside it, okay? So just like surface area, it requires you to focus on the dimensions it needs for each formula. I'm going to provide you with the formulas. You just need to break them down. So if we look at number one, actually more importantly, if we look at the dimensions that are needed, let's look at this lesson, 11.7, uh, revolves around prisms, rectangular or cubes. Uh, also any other type of prism that does not have a regular square or rectangular base which means the name comes from whatever the base is so if it's a triangle it's going to be a triangular prism if it's a hexagon it's going to be a hexagonal prism and so forth we're also going to deal with cylinders so those are the three we're going to talk about in this lesson um, we're going to focus on the first one the rectangular prisms or cubes you need these three things. You need length, you need width, and you need height. So if we go to number one, all three are provided. Because it is a multiplication problem, um, it doesn't matter whether length, width, or height comes first, or who length, width, or height is. You're multiplying. Okay. So if we look at number one, uh, typically people call the longest side, that's my length, and that's fine with me. So we'll call that length, we can call number nine width, and if you want to call 17, you can call that height, or switch them around, it really doesn't matter. Notice how volume is your length times your width times your height. In this case, they put the width first, the height, and the length. It doesn't matter what order they come in. If you go to number two, I'm only going to do two problems here. These are fairly straightforward, fairly easy. All right, we have another rectangular prism. Uh, let's call this length, let's call this height, and let's call this width. Notice I didn't really care. Volume equals width, length, height. Okay, so here comes a doozy. Here comes the all other prisms. Here's what's key. The big B. You have your formula. It's going to be a multiplication problem. You're going to multiply big B, which is the area of the base. So that means you are going to have to find the area of whatever the base is. You only need one of them, okay? The other is you will need the height. This height is between bases, so how do you know what type of prism it is? You're going to focus on, oh, these two shapes are similar. Say, for instance, this one. This one has two triangles that are the same. These are my bases, okay? Base. And base on the bottom. That space between becomes your height. So let's look at uh, let's look at number five. This 
So important for number five is let's find out who my bases are. It's a triangular prism. I know that and I'm naming it because I have one triangle here and I have another triangle back here. Those are my two similar triangles. Those are my bases. So now that I know my bases, I know that the distance right here between this base and this base, this is my height. So for the big B H, I have my H. Bam, there it is. Okay. So now we need to solve for the area. Area of just one of these triangles. Notice they give us this right here. This is a triangular height. This is the height so that we can solve for this guy's area. We know that triangle area is equal to one half base height. And it's a little b because it's this base right here. This is my base. 5.4 is my height. Plug those in, you get your area of your triangle, then he goes into this formula. This is the big B times the height. We'll do one more. We'll do the, let's do the trapezoid prism. Well, I already named the trapezoid. That means I know what type of bases they have. Here we have one trapezoid. Here we have another trapezoid. Okay. Those are my two bases. Those are the two similar bases. Your bases are not going to be unsimilar. They're not going to be different. They have to look exactly the same. So I have two trapezoids. So I need to find the area of one of these trapezoids. If we remember the area of a trapezoid, the formula is one half at the basis, so base one plus base two, and then multiply it times the height of the trapezoid, not the height of the actual prism. People are getting confused with that. So if I'm looking at just this trapezoid, I'm going to look for the height of just that trapezoid. Guess who that is? This guy right here, that's 17.9. This is my H of the trapezoid. This is given. And now we have this base right here. Well, this base is similar to this base. So that's 36. And then we need this one right here. Boom, we have all the information needed to get our big B. Big B times the height between bases. So here is one trapezoid base, here's another trapezoid base, so the distance between is this thing, this one, this one, oh look this one, this one has a value of 25, this is my height of the trapezoid, bam, the rest is just calculator work, put it in the calculator, press enter, and unless you entered it wrong, you should get the right answer. The homework assignment for this one, let's look at what I can do for you guys. Oh, I still have to go over cylinder, but let's, uh, yeah, let me go over cylinder before I give you what the assignment is. Hold on. All right, we're finishing off with cylinders. We're dealing with volume. Again, we are focusing on this formula. 
and what is needed. Pi, we already know that I want you to use, for now, those of you that don't have a scientific calculator, I'm going to have you just use 3.14. If you have access to a scientific calculator, your measurements are going to be a little bit more accurate. Your numbers are going to be a little bit different than my answers on your homework assignment, but that's okay. If you're off, maybe by two or three units, just know that it's probably because of that. So, moving on, we want to fulfill the formula. Volume equals pi r squared times height. That means we need the radius and we need the height. So one way or another, we're going to have to solve for those. We may have to use Pythagorean theorem uh, to solve for one for the radius or the height. So we're looking at number nine. Okay. We know that from the center to any wall of a circle, that is your radius. This is a cylinder, which means it has a circular base on both ends so this those are your bases so that means that 15 ends up being your height so we have this formula radius squared times height substitute here I would use 3.14 so if we use 3.14 this would look like 4860 times 3.14 your answer would look like this 15,260.4 this would be okay notice how they are almost similar. We move on to number 10 because that is also a problem that some students have is you're not given the radius. Okay. You're given this full length from one edge of the circle to the other edge passing through the center. We all know that is the diameter. Well, if I move over here, your radius is equal to half your diameter. So if we have 11 as your diameter, my radius is going to be 5.5. Here we have one circular base, here we have the other circular base. So 21 ends up being the height of the cylinder. So we have everything we need. We have the radius squared, we have your height, you simply plug it into the calculator, you get that, you multiply times 3.14, and I will give you what it should look like, 635.25 times 3.14, this one should have been point, round to the nearest hundredth, which is the second decimal place, so this would be what I would put on the answer. I have a scientific calculator, but not everybody has access to it. So, And if you don't know how to use your phone to access a scientific calculator on your phone, again, use 3.14 for pi. So now, let's look at your homework problems. Um, I promised I would go easy on you guys. Uh, we have a total of 14. So let's go with seven problems. Let's see one.
let's go one through six and fourteen. Have a good time with that. One through six and fourteen. Actually, one through five, ten, and fourteen. I'll put it up on the notes on the actual instructions on Google Classroom. Stay tuned for eleven point eight.